Today you see an amazing trench coat that I made myself. You can make one too. It's not a typical beige camo type color. It's red and it's amazing. I'm gonna be sharing all the details. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today I have a special episode where I'm sharing I would say one of my most proudest makes up to this point. There have been a lot of projects that I've made that I've loved, but this one has to be way up there. I'm not gonna say it's the best, the number one, you know, I, I can't really, but probably in my top three ever in more than 30 years of sewing. Now, this is a trench coat. And a couple of months ago, I believe it was in September, maybe August, I made a video here on the channel showing you my plans that I wanted to make one, maybe possible fabrics. I also showed you about 10 patterns that I found for these types of garments. It's not like you can find a billion of these patterns. They are quite involved, so there's not many designers that have made patterns for a trench coat but they are there, they are around. I knew I was gonna be choosing between three of them because three of all those 10 were sort of my favorites. So around September, I put it up for Patreon. I have a Patreon page and different tiers there. The Orchid tier gets a full sew along from me, usually from an intermediate to advanced pattern. And I put a lot of time and dedication to my Patreon page because it's one of the most important ways I make an income and I do have exclusive content there. So I always knew that if I was gonna sew a trench coat, that project would be on my Patreon page. So I put up my three top favorite trench patterns there for voting. And I sort of knew that the one that won was the one that was gonna win because I think it has the most of the classic features of a trench coat. And it's the Isla Trench from Named Patterns. Very beautiful, it has so many details. The collar is very nice, it's nice and wide. It's got a collar stand. It's got a collar strap here. It's an extra detail that in essence for function, would, it would allow you to close this up, you know, for the wind and the cold and the rain and things. For me, that feature is just decorative because let's be honest, I'm making a trench coat because they're pretty, not because I need it for the type of weather, you know? And then you have a little cape or in other cases it's called a stone flap right here. It's, overlaid on top of the main pieces and it looks like a cape in the front and the back that's really cute there's a center back seam there's a long overlap vent it's a fully lined trench coat you've got belt loops and belts over here on the two-piece sleeve you have a strap and a belt and a loop and all of those little details as well funnily enough i thought this was going to be more boxy fitting than it actually is because in the liner you can't see that there's a basta there and that was a very pleasant surprise I found when I actually purchased the pattern and printed the pattern, started looking at the instructions. I saw there was a bust start there. I had always thought if this doesn't have enough shaping, I'll probably add a bust start there anyway. So the fact that it's there, I think is perfect and it makes all the difference with the feet. Five stars to name patterns for putting that bust start there. It made me very happy. <laughs> the pockets on the front are a type of modified welt pocket. It, you see a sort of a wider flap that covers it that's sort of folded onto itself and it's slanted when you put your hands in. I think it's really, really pretty and also looks like a really classic trench coat feature. I think you can use a variety of woven fabrics for this. I think if you wanted it to be more like a coat, a wool suiting, I think it would work as well. For my main fabric, I chose a tensile twill. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I bought the same type of fabric in blue like a real nice royal blue i've got it in a beige and i bought it in red because once i bought a little bit just to see how the fabric was i loved it so much i ended up ordering in other colors never knowing what actual color i was going to choose for the trench coat but red is a perfect choice for me you know i could have made a beige and look like any other trench coat but no red was the way to go i think if you wanted it to be nice and warm maybe you could line the main pieces with a flannel maybe a cotton flannel and then use something more slippery for the sleeves. There's so many options. Inside you could use silk. I would never, it's just, I, I could not line with 100% silk. It's just too expensive. So I know a lot of people do like doing that. So if you can afford a whole bunch of silk, go ahead. <laughs> you could use rayon, rayon Bemberg. There's appropriate lining fabrics. I had a choice between two fabrics. Ended up going with my second choice and then through the project ended up going back to my first choice, which I should have done. I should have listened to my gut feeling, but I didn't. Sometimes that happens to all of us. You need a lot of interfacing. Oh my gosh, you need a lot of feasible interfacing because 
I would say 99% of all the pieces are interfaced in entirely or partially. You need six larger buttons and then you need four smaller buttons. Hopefully they're the same or matching. The Isla is available in European sizes 32 to 56 and in US sizing is equivalent from 0 to 24 US. That goes up to a 56 inch hip. I think the ease drafted into this pattern is appropriate. I wouldn't suggest you size down or size up. I would suggest you make the size according to your body measurements and you will be okay. Remember, this is a garment that you wear on top of things. So you need it to be larger than your body measurements because a really fitted trench coat does not make sense. So you can look at the finished garment measurements, of course. I always do to see how much ease there is. And for this one, there's about four and a half to five inches of positive ease around the bust, which is okay. It's straighter down, so there's a lot of ease at the waist, and then at the hips is around eight. So don't try to make your smaller. I made a size 48 European equivalent to a size 16 US, and I was very happy. The only fitting adjustment I made here was to make mine shorter. Name patterns, drafts for a taller woman, five foot eight, five foot nine. So I'm sort of in the range there. But if you look at the pictures on the website and everywhere, it's meant to be really long, like ankle long. And I never wanted my trench coat that long. So mine was five inches shorter and it was really easy to shorten. Just pick a spot above the vent, below the full hip in all the pieces and go ahead and make them shorter including the front facing, including the lining, everything has to be exactly the same so you still end up with the perfect look. If you wanted to make a trench coat yourself but think it's just way too much for you, I have really simplified it in the sew along over on my Patreon page. It's a five video series in a playlist and it's really easy to follow. It is a project that takes a little longer to sew. I'm not gonna deny that. If you would like some sewing hand holding and to see everything that you can follow along, you could 100% get one done for yourself as well. And I never actually promote my Patreon page. I mention it here and there, but I was encouraged by some of my long-term Patreon supporters to just promote this that I have this sew along. Some of you might like to join up and follow along this sew along and make an amazing piece like this. It's not that easy to find the sew along from start to finish for a garment like this. It has so many details and so many steps. So I welcome you to join. You can leave anytime you want. You're not locked in for a period of time. You know, you can be there for a month if you want. It's up to you. And there is a lot of exclusive content over there that I don't post on my YouTube channel. Although on this YouTube channel, there is a lot of helpful content as well. On Patreon, I have even more. So I welcome you to join if you want to. I do a lot of extra work to have that exclusive content on Patreon. It is one of the ways I make an income doing what I do. So if you join, I'm very grateful. It's just an invitation, nothing more. I dedicated 10 sewing days for this trench coat. It's not that I did them, you know, in the calendar one after the other. There were lots of breaks in between. I've been sewing this since the beginning of October so I did take my little rest times in between and every day that I was gonna sew I filmed a little bit for you about what was happening on that day vlog style up there in my sewing room so let's exciting day today because after studying the pattern and reading through the instructions getting all my supplies ready I'm finally going to start this and I'm gonna take it really slow I've sort of got a list of tasks to complete per day and this is the first time I'm actually gonna start so I have a pile of paper on my table here. I need to assemble this PDF. I've got one file which is for the main layer and then another one for the lining layer. So I can see this is gonna take a little while. I do assemble my PDFs myself. I don't have the option of sending to a place to be printed out on A0 paper. I just don't know where to do that. So I just do it myself and I don't regret it. I find putting it all together really relaxing. It also helps me see every detail of the pattern while I'm doing it. I look at the marks, I look at the shapes, I see what is printed on there, instructions, seam allowance. So it's all a process that helps me internalize the pattern, so I don't mind at all. I just do it. It takes a while, but that's, that's fine. Okay, I've got it assembled. I'm gonna cut the lining layer first. I'm just gonna put it on the table and start cutting all of this up. I am planning to make a test garment as well, but first I've gotta cut all these pieces and get them all sorted. Still working. <laughs> I'm gonna make a test garment now. And it's gonna be really, really fast. I wanna check for the placement of that dart. I think it's gonna be okay. I wanna check if the shoulders need adjusting to be made narrower or wider, whatever that could be. 
I want to check for the length of the sleeves, if that fits well, and just general ease, just to see how everything's going to come together. I don't anticipate problems, but let's see. And there's only a few pieces I need, just the front, a back. I'm cutting them way shorter than the actual pattern because I don't need the full length to see the feet. And I'm just going to sew in one sleeve two-piece sleeve so there's an upper sleeve and an under sleeve there it is it was very fast to sew I'm just gonna try it on now and see what's going on and then I can actually start the real thing which is going to be cutting all the pieces interfacing a lot of pieces that is going to take a long time but I'm gonna leave that for another day I think I've done a lot for one day I don't want to feel overwhelmed with this one sort of decided this is going to take me around 10 days to sew just in small little chunks and I think I'm gonna really enjoy it like that I want it to come out as best as it can I want it to be absolutely beautiful another thing I'll do for this first day is wash my fabric I've chosen my red fabric and my lining fabric I would get those hanging and dried yes see you another day taking my time to wash and prepare the fabric beforehand I have some of it behind me and I said it on red I always knew I was gonna choose that and so this is the main fabric over here I bought quite a bit of it just to make sure I had enough it's a tensile twill in a very beautiful red it's got a lovely drape got the proper weight for a trench coat i find it's very crumpled i have to press it and then for the lining i have two options you know how the trench coats have like a cape in the front and the back there's two layers there on the inside when you walk you know that could lift you would definitely see the fabric underneath that's named as lining so i was always going to use this fabric to line that one it's a poly satin jacquard type situation here that is how it looks it's shiny on one side you can see some flowers there with a jacquard type weave that's the wrong side so i was always going to use this fabric to line the storm flaps or the cape the front and the back pieces what i was pondering about was whether to use this on the inside as well or use a print so i have washed this one as well but I'm 100% convinced I'm not going to use it. <laughs> this is 100% rayon crepe. It's quite light. It's got a bit of a sheen to it. It's got this plaid. And I think in theory it would look really cool inside. But then I'm always conflicted about the coat moving and opening and the lining being seen and clashing with whatever I'm wearing under the coat. I really can't deal with that really well. <laughs> I'm going to stick with just the red lining. I've already made up my mind. I know I'm going to be happier to have red everywhere on the outside, on the inside. It's cutting day and I've reserved a huge chunk of hours today. I find cutting a little bit exhausting just because of the position I'm in. I've got a higher table now, but it's still very exhausting and I do take my time with it. I don't rush it. So I'm going to start with the lining because I think it's just easier. It's less pieces. I'm a tad frustrated, been scratching my head for a while. And I have an issue with the back piece of the lining. Not that I have an issue with it, but it's just the way it's meant to be cut. There are two cut lines. One is wider than the other. They're the same here at the top of the piece, but then one gets narrower towards the bottom and the other one doesn't. And one says one is for the right side or the left side. How you're supposed to cut it with the fabric right sides up, with the fabric wrong sides up, right or left as worn on the body. And you know, lining is different than main pieces. There is a difference between the right and the left side at the bottom of the back because of the vent. And it's so early into the project, I can't even visualize how that's gonna to come together because I haven't even started the project. So I'm just gonna cut them both the same. And then when it gets to the part where I'm actually constructing this, that's where I'm gonna figure out which is the side that needed to be smaller. I've marked the line there of the narrower cut line on both pieces so that I can trim it off on both sides if I need to. But I just need to get cutting. I need to get cutting out of the way. And I'll worry about which side is the right and the left later i've already been cutting out the lining because found that was easier it was less pieces what i've got here on the table is a whole bunch of interfacing and a lot of little pieces because we need to stabilize a lot of the areas for the trench coat all around the neckline the armholes the hems the tops of the sleeves there's so many little pieces that you need to create for yourself and cut out of interfacing lots of little pieces here this is why i know i'm going to take hours to do this is going to take a long time so i've taken my sweet time to create those pattern pieces it took a little while i just used paper and a tracing wheel to create those pieces they're basically one and a half inches along the edge so i had to mark that on my main pieces and then just create new pieces out of these shapes here 
It's like creating facings, but they're not facings. They're just going to be cut out of interfacing. Another day, and I don't know how I thought I could cut out the whole thing in one day. There was no way. It was just too much. So don't try to cut it in one day. I say it from experience. So I'm doing another day for cutting, and this time I'm doing the main pieces. Remember, I'd cut smaller pieces of interfacing that follow the shape of the pattern pieces that were going to stabilize the tops. I did that, I had to mark and trace the outline of the areas that needed to be interfaced on each pieces with tracing paper. Go ahead and fuse those at the eye end. This is because I'm doing modified block fusing, which is something that I do all the time when I have to do things like this. So I don't just cut it and then fuse the piece on. If I did that, I run into the risk of all the, these areas just shrinking and just not lying right. Then I can go ahead and trim the bottoms around because you know I left a little bit more fabric there interfaced a little bigger, just slightly bigger. Yeah, this can take quite a long time, so there was no way I was gonna be able to do that all in one day, plus the lining, plus all the other things. Just look at this rubbish bin. It's full of little pieces that are partially interfaced from all the cutting process. Over here on the cutting board, I have the main pieces right there. You can see these areas are stabilized. That's for the welt pocket, you know, the vent armhole areas. Yeah, these can take quite a while. I'm gonna have four of these filled up with red thread so I'm ready for the bobbin and I don't have to do that later on. But I'm sure I'm gonna need more than four but I'd rather start with a large amount. I'm also gonna use a fresh new needle. I'm using a number 90 universal needle. I do believe that a fresh needle does make a difference and can prevent snagging in the fabric. I have heard people say that they don't believe in that, but I'm one of the people that... Now it's finally time for this machine to start working and I'm really itching to sew. Um, but start, well, pockets, those are the first steps and I'm very excited to get going. It's another day of sewing and it's a gorgeous day. I'm sitting right here in front of a window and I'm getting really nice breeze early in the morning. And today is an important day because I'm going to be sewing the welt pockets. I know it's something that's going to take a little while longer. I'm prepared to take quite a while, not just because I'm sewing it, but also because I'm filming it. So anything I'm filming is going to take triple the time. But what I suggest with any technique like this is just to do a practice run. And that's what I've done. I've taken my time to follow the instructions step by step. And I've got a fake welt pocket here on scraps. I even interfaced the pieces that needed to be interfaced, just trying to replicate it as much as possible without being that accurate with sewing. I did not hand baste any of this. But you can see that the welt pocket piece is a long piece that's going to be folded onto itself like this. And actually that is the way that you wear it. It'll be slanted and you put your hand in there and whatever fabric you use inside is not going to be seen. So you can use our colors in there. There is the pocket bag. That's how it looks like on the other side. It's all very neat. You won't see this. This will all be covered with the lining in the end. I'm excited. I've got all the technique down, all the steps. It's really helpful to do a practice run like this. I don't think it's a waste of time. And now I, I get to do the real thing. Look how pretty this looks. This is one of my final pockets. It's already done. I've got a cotton lawn inside with pretty fabric. It'll still be covered by the lining, but I can see it now and it's so pretty. And it's such a neat technique very neat it's not as hard as you think and it was very enjoyable so I'm really excited to have these pockets done it's all crumpled you know but this is how it looks like on this side the folded edge onto itself this is tacked by hand that's how you put your hands in and in there we see the pocket bags such a nice pocket it's a brand new day it's day number five of the Isla Trench now I want to clarify I'm not doing these in a row so this is day number five of the project in total, in the whole time span, it's longer than that because there's days in between where I'm doing other things. But this is day number five of the trench. Sewing machine here and myself have a lot to do today. <laughs> what pockets are done, I can forget about those. And I just get to do general seams today. I'm going to be doing side seams, putting the main pieces together. Now this one's a little different because you don't sew the shoulder seams at first. You just sew the side seams for the main trench. And we get to put this cute little cape together, which are the storm flaps. It's the pieces that go here on top, on the front and the back. It's like a little cape that you sew on top of the main pieces. For that also, you just sew side seams and leave the shoulder uh, to the end. So I'm going to do that. I am so excited. I've been doing quite a lot of hand basting for this. And you can see the front here it has a little cape on. 
The shoulder seams have been sewn. It's quite a few layers on the shoulder seams because it's the main seams plus the cape all in one there. And at the armholes, you're also gonna have more layers, but we have this on top. The little cape is lined with a lighter weight fabric, also in red, so when the wind moves, it's always gonna be red. And at the back, I have the little cape right there as well. So, so cute. I mean, I'm in very early stages yet, but once these pieces are on, I can see it's looking like a trench coat already and it's very exciting. So I'm just gonna try it on, show you a little bit in front of the mirror so you can see the total length I'm going for. Mine is about five inches shorter than the original length. And the ease that you see there is very appropriate. You know, remember it's a trench coat, it's not a fitted something, and there's also gonna be a belt at the waist. The next time I sew this, it'll be day six of the project. It will all have to do with the collar that's gonna go on here. And the collar has quite a few details, so I still have a raw neckline at this point. <laughs> It's another day and it's my sixth day of sewing my trench coat. I've really been enjoying it and on this day I have a few things I want to tick off the list and it's mainly got to do with the collar. Some jackets have a simple collar, just one piece, you know, they might be an upper collar that's different to the under collar, one's interface, one isn't, that sort of thing. But in this case, the Isla trench coat not only has the collar, it has a collar stand and it has a strap that goes across the bottom with some loops, like belt loops, but on the collar stand. So there's quite a few little details that I'm getting ready and nothing is hard. It's basically rectangles and straight seams, but for some of these, you need to turn them right sides out. It can get a little time consuming to get a really accurate look, but it's not hard. Let me just show you down below what I've got here. I've got the collar unit already done. Took a few steps, I've got the collar stand, the collar, the strap, the loops, I've got it all there. This is how this is looking on the inside, this is the neckline here, the shoulder seams. But over here we have the whole collar unit hanging off. It's been basted on and if I lift this you'll see all the details under here, the loops, the strap, all of this. So when you wear your coat you're not even going to see them. So all that work for something that's not going to be seen. <laughs> But it was still fun and that's where I'm at right now. Day number six, I can tick. And the next day I sew this, day number seven will be all about the sleeves, setting in the sleeves. And the sleeves are not just a two-piece sleeve. Of course, they have little straps and loops here at the bottom as well. I know they class trench coats as super challenging and whatnot. I don't think they are. It's just a lot of straight seams. It's just that there's more of them and little things to flip around to the right side. So that's just patience, that's all. There's nothing hard. It's just being patient with all the tiny little extra things that we have here, like this. All of this took quite a while and no one's ever gonna see it because it's underneath the collar. <laughs> but anywho, that's where I'm at and I'm really enjoying this so far. This is day seven of my trench journey and I've spent a few hours sewing the sleeves. Now I say a few hours, not that it's gonna take you a few hours, it takes me a few hours because I'm hand basting and I'm filming. So anything will take you a lot less if you're just sewing you know, at your own pace without a camera and talking and all of that. I've got the two piece sleeves already constructed here. This is the long seam right here. And then we have a short seam, it's all pressed. Remember the tops of these sleeves are stabilized. It was something that was done very early on. I already have my gathering stitch done to be able to set this in. Now, if this was a regular sleeve, it would take no time, but there's this little strap detail here that was sewn into this seam before. And there's also a little loop there. I've tucked the strap into the loop just to keep it out of the way. I already did a memory crease for my hem, so that's done. One of the many reasons I do a test garment and I sew on a sleeve is, of course, you want to check the fit. But it also lets you know how much ease it's drafted into the sleeve cup. And from sewing the test garment and knowing it was very easy to set in, there's not much gathering going on here at all. This is just very relaxed and I'm not having any type of stress about setting in the sleeve. I've got both little sleeves ready and I'm gonna set these in. <laughs> After doing this, we always check, of course, what happened. This looks smooth over here underneath on the sleeve. I don't see any pockets form at all. But then the truth is how it looks like from this side. And it's looking pretty good. It's looking very nice and neat, very smooth. So this was a success. <laughs> Sleeve is in. 
And now we repeat the same on the other side. Here's a sneaky little look with the sleeves in. This is all for today. Next day, I'm gonna tackle belt loops, belts, facings, all those types of details. We're going on to day number eight and it's looking so much like the trench coat already. I'm really excited about what's going on. After putting on the sleeves, you know, it, it looks like a trench coat. So today I'm gonna do lots of little bits and bobs, belt loops and whatnot. And the belt loops are done in the same way that I did the loops on the collar over here, the ones that are gonna go over here as well. It's just that it's a different pattern piece, slightly larger. And it's only two of them because there's gonna be one on each side. But before doing the belt loop, I think it's better for me to do the belt first so I know exactly what the finished width of the belt is and I know exactly how I want to sew these belt loops onto the jacket itself. I think the placement of the belt loops has to be individual for you. I think you should, I think you should put on the jacket with the belt. That's why I want to make the belt first <laughs> tied around the waist. That's going to easily show you where the waist is because it's going to look for the smaller part. And then you can place the belt loops in the correct space. I don't think a pattern should tell you where they go because our heights are different and our waist heights are different. So. That's what I'm doing. At this point, I just tied the belt around my waist and just made it snug. That will naturally find the smallest part. And I got my son to mark with a friction pen on the side seam where the upper part of the belt is. This is a little mark that my son made on the side seam. So my belt was like this. You know, yours might be higher or lower. That's why I don't believe that there should be a specific point because you should choose that yourself. And this is where I'm gonna just fold this by 5 eighths and align it to that mark and then fold the other side by 5 eighths and sew it down there right on the side seam. Now to line the jacket, it's gonna be a little bit different to other ones that I've done because I'd say 99% of all the jackets I've lined, you assemble all the lining pieces, you sew them onto the facing so that you have a completed inner layer and then you sew them together on the edges and flip. Well, in this case, it's a little different because we're just gonna sew the facing onto the neckline first. I'm gonna leave the lining for later. I've tried to like get rid of most of the things on the table so that I have enough room to put this huge garment on here because it does take up quite a bit of space. <laughs> Little cape, lapel, it's still not pressed, but it's looking so good. Collar stand right here with a strap underneath. This supposedly has a button and a button hole later on. It'll just be decorative but it's so pretty. So I think it's looking really, really good with the facing in there. It, the facing on the inside is raw on the edges. I still need to assemble the lining pieces and then sew it all the way around the edge of the facing that's already on the neckline. But for sure it was easier to manage with just the facing there to go around the curves. You know, it's nice and curved over here in the lapel. So yeah, I do like this. The lining bit comes tomorrow, day nine. <laughs> Hello, it's day nine and I've encountered a little bit of an issue. So I thought I was sort of ahead of my own schedule because I devised around 10 days and I'm on day nine. And today was the day I thought I was gonna finish because sewing the lining pieces together, that's quite easy. It's just a few straight seams and then I was gonna join it, bag it out. I thought I could do that in a day, but I've had second thoughts about my lining fabric. <laughs> and back when I started this, I showed you I had two options. I had a plaid, the rayon crepe, very, very nice and appropriate for it. Lightweight, slippery, all the things you want. But I had issues with that clashing against something I would wear with a trench coat. So I decided on a plain red satin poly lining, very pretty, very soft, beautiful. But it turns out that it frays, oh my gosh, it frays so much. Just let me show you a little bit about it. I've changed my mind completely about the lining at the last minute. I had taken my original lining pieces and I had surged some edges because it turns out that this fabric really frays so, so, so much. I'm concerned about the longevity of the seams inside the trench coat, so I knew I had to serge everything. And even the edges that I serge, even the needle is sort of threatening to tear the serged area apart. So it's not a good choice, even though I love how it looks and I love that it's red. In practicality, I've changed my mind and that's fine. You know, no harm done. This is not expensive fabric. I'm just not gonna use that. And I went back to my original choice, which was this plaid. <laughs> I still had it there, I had enough. So I just recut all the lining pieces. There aren't many of them. So I decided to just discard that lining. I think it was appropriate for the inside layers of the cape, but for the jacket itself, I think over time the seams would have ripped. The, they would have just given out and just ruined all this work. <laughs> 
So I went back to my plaid, which means I had to take out a whole chunk of hours to cut these because I wanted the plaid to match, at least on the back pieces, which means cutting them in a single layer. It's a really slippery fabric. Yeah, it, it was just... I'm now, at the end of the day, going to start assembling this lining. So I'm just going to finish my coat within the 10 days I had planned because there's no way I could finish all of this today. I'm just going to have to let it roll over till day 10. <clears throat> I'm just going to finish sewing up my lining and tomorrow is going to be the day that this is done. So up to yesterday, I was able to sew my lining all together, get all of that done and sew that to the edge of the facing because that's how the jacket was at that point. And now I'm just going to sew up the bottoms, do the flipping out, bagging out, that sort of thing. I just like to start like pulling it like this. It'll all come out. Okay, so it's bagged out. After that's done, I have a lot of fiddling to do, some hand sewing to finish on one of the ends of the vent. Also close up the gap where I left the lining open to bag the jacket out of. All of that happens today. And then at the last step, there's buttonholes and buttons. There's not many of them. The original jacket had six, but because I made my jacket a little shorter, I'm just gonna use five. So there's only five buttonholes to do, but there's 10 buttons to sew because it looks like double-breasted, but it's actually just got one row of buttonholes. And then there's little ones over here on the straps and over here, so lots of little bits to do. And I'm gonna practice the size. So I've just made a practice one just by eyeballing and it's exactly the right size it has to be. It goes in nice and snug, it's not too big, it's not too little, and it's perfect. Oh my gosh, look at my eyelid trench coat in all its glory, in all its red glory. I'm super happy with how the plaid looks here. It looks amazing. I'm very happy with the result and I can't wait to show you how it looks like on. <laughs> this is my gorgeous Isla trench coat. It is so beautiful. I just can't stop staring at it. And I can't tell you the amount of joy I had while making this and just seeing all the steps, just watching it come to life from a just plain piece of fabric <laughs> to this. It's just so gorgeous. This is the collar and the collar stand right there. At the back, if you lift this up, there's a little loop, another loop over here on the side, and a strap. This is one of the things I saw on the line art and on the pictures that I thought, you know, I wouldn't really do that if I wasn't sewing it for Patreon, because it's something that is not seen. For function though, it would allow you to sort of close this up, because there's a buttonhole and buttons, so if you were having like a lot of rain and wind and cold weather, you could like close this up. It's pretty, it's very pretty, but it did take a while to sew up. Nothing hard though, it just takes a while longer. <laughs> Here we have the collar sandwiched between the facing and the main, and you have this lapel, it's nice and rounded. It's all top stitch, it's all done in two rows of top stitching at the edge, and then a quarter of an inch in. And then we have the buttons. This cape is sewn onto all of this piece quite in the beginning and then the front and the back act as one piece. Very pretty. I have this beautiful lining inside. I initially had planned to use this lining everywhere but it ended up not being correct for this. It wouldn't have lasted. But I definitely think it's correct for the cape. And that's how it looks like on the back. Here is the belt. Belt loop over here that I figured out the placement by trying on my trench coat. So it's correct. The belt, the belt was only supposed to be interfaced half of it lengthwise. I decided to interface the whole thing. I think you should interface the whole thing because any belt that's made out of fabric should be interfaced. So it's nice and structured. There's only one row of buttonholes here. I have five instead of six because I made my coat a little shorter. And then there's two rows of buttons though. So when you wear it and overlap it, it will look double-breasted. You have buttons here and buttons there. The sleeves are two-piece. I do have a shoulder pad in there. I think you should put one on. I think it makes a huge difference. And the two-piece sleeve with the details over here of the strap, the loop, and the buttonhole with the button is really, really nice. Over here is a vent, overlap vent that is lined. On the edge that's on the inside, the lining is right on the edge. That's why I was a bit reluctant to use something contrasting, but pressing it well, I don't think it's ever gonna be seen. And on the inside, I have this plaid. Took me ages to cut the back because there is a center back seam on the lining and I wanted the stripes to match. 
I didn't want that mismatching, although I'm not matching the side seams inside of the lining, that would have been too much. The lining inside the sleeves, I didn't match up either. Those can be mismatched, there's no worries there. <laughs> and what can I say? It's just amazing. I'm going to show it to you on very simple styling. I actually put this black dress on now to film because I'm just going to put the trench coat on top of this black dress. Here's my gorgeous Isla trench coat and I'm just going to style it super simple. I would actually wear it just like this if I want to dress it up a little. This is my black Fistera dress from Inch to Stitch woven rayon, very comfortable, very nice. And I've decided to use purple to go with the red. I think it's not the typical color combo, but I really love it. So silk scarf always for the win. I just can't get over how beautiful this looks. It's just so pretty. And the plaid inside is really pretty as well. So let's put it on. <laughs> Ta-da, here it is in all its glory. It's so beautiful, it feels so nice on. I'm very happy with the fabric choice because of the color, the way it drapes and it doesn't feel really heavy on. It's not a lightweight fabric, but it doesn't feel like I put a thousand pounds on myself, which sometimes is the way you feel with these garments. Love the length. Remember mine is five inches shorter. I think this was meant to be really, really long. Drafted for a tall woman like me, but I didn't want mine that long. Here I have the belts. I don't think I'll ever belt it, but I think it looks good and it looks classic like it should. You have buttons on both sides but there's only button holes here that you overlap a little to close up to here and if I were to ever button this up I don't think I'd do the top button. I just start from the second one downwards and there we have it buttoned up. Initially I thought these pockets were low but they're actually fine at least for my arms. That's how it looks like on the back. You can see the cape. It's very simple and then there's a vent there for walking. But let's be honest, am I ever gonna wear it tied up like this? I don't think so. I'm always gonna wear it open. This is how the plaid lining looks like inside. I think it looks really cool. Initially, I wanted that red lining, but it wasn't very good quality. It wasn't gonna work out and give my jacket longevity. So I'm glad I changed it. it although it took me an extra couple of hours, I'm happy. Here's a closer look at the pocket. It's lowish, but perfect for the length of my arms. Maybe if you're a little shorter, you might want to think about maybe raising that mark there and just sewing them a little higher. It won't make any difference to the technique. There are the belt loops and the button. It gives the waist a little bit of shaping, even though I don't tie it up all the time. I could also just wear it like that, tied up at the back. I've seen that happen a lot and that's nice as well. There's a large facing, it's quite wide, and the lining in there, very nice and neat. Here's the detail at the bottom of the sleeve. We have a strap and a loop little buttonhole and button over there very nice love that it was not hard to sew although this seam here can get a bit bulky it's not too bad you can see how this looks like in relation to my face and it's so nice the collar stand and collar all of this unit took a whole day of my planning to sew lots of nice details you need accurate sewing which takes a little longer and it's pretty at the back you can see how i try to lift up the collar so you can see the strap and the loops on the back, they're covered. No one's ever gonna see them. It did take quite a while. I think if you wanted to skip this detail, you absolutely could. But if you wanted to add it on, just know that it's gonna take a while. <laughs> but it's not hard, it's not hard at all. It's just extra tight. I really love the proportions here, the, how big the collar is, how big this lapel is. I think they're really proportional. I love it. And the shoulder fit is perfect. This is the size I sewed according to my measurements. I wouldn't want to size up or size down. I think it's absolutely perfect. So if you just choose your size based on what the pattern recommends, you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> here are some details at the top. You can see that the collar has a collar stand there. The lapel is nice and round, nice and wide. And underneath we have a strap with some loops in there that no one can see. And you know, in essence, this is meant to be functional so you could close this up. But why would I do that? There's two buttons there and a button hole. I think it looks super pretty, but I'll never use it. It was easier to sew the facing in and have all this finish, the top stitching, without the lining being sewn on, for sure. Sewing on the lining after this was done was easier in this case. And here you can see the cape. It's quite small. It doesn't really affect the bust fit, I find, at all. And on this one, I did use the poly satin lining jacquard type fabric. I think that's appropriate. I wouldn't have wanted something contrasting here at all. 
and very discreet. There is a pasta that I'm very happy is there. I didn't need to change its location or anything. And I think the shoulder fit is perfect. There are small shoulder pads in there and I think you do need them, don't skip them because it just really helps with the structure and the fit here. That's how the cape looks like in the back. Very, very pretty, really like it. Different, I'm so happy I was able to make this. I think it's really worth your time to try a project like this. That's not hard at all, it just takes a little longer. I didn't find any of the techniques hard. You just need patience and just go ticking them along and you'll end up with an amazing trench like this. Absolutely worth your time making because these garments can be quite expensive and you could make yours however you want it to be. I would definitely make another one. I know if I make this a second time, it would take probably a third of the time because I already know what to do and I wouldn't have to film it. So yeah, amazing, love it. I think this is an amazing pattern, it's really good. I love it so much and I can't wait until I can actually wear this out in real life. It will probably be next year in April because I'm in opposite seasons here. I'm in full on spring going to summer. It's really hot right now, not trench coat weather. I know a lot of you are in the Northern Hemisphere in autumn winter. So that's why I'm showing the trench coat right now. I love it so much. Don't think it's something that is unattainable for you. You can certainly do it yourself as well. The pattern instructions have little diagrams for most of the steps. There are a lot of words you have to read. There isn't a diagram for each of the steps and I'm so happy with the result. It's just amazing and I'm very happy I took all the time I needed to make it. There's no point in rushing something like this. It's something that's gonna take a long time but also you're gonna have it for a long time and it's very worth making. If you want to check out my Patreon page, the Orchid Tea has this sew along there as exclusive content you can access straight away and get sewing. You get a really nice trench coat as well. I know I have been a little bit absent on this channel, but this project took that long. I really needed to focus on it and even though I had little bits of projects in between, I know I haven't been making as many videos as usual, but I hope that can return to some sort of normality. And I run the channel all by myself. I do everything here by myself. So yeah, my time gets really compromised, <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. I'm just really happy to have this piece. It's one of a kind, it's so beautiful. I just can't get over how beautiful it turned out. And it's so nice in red, I just love it. I hope you give making a trench coat a go someday as well. I think you can do it for sure. That's all from me. I'll see you again on this channel with more sewing content soon, I hope. Bye.